and welcome to Connecting Hawaii Business on a Think Tech Hawaii. My name is Kathleen Lee and I am your host for this program. Today I am excited to welcome back to the show Michelle Farmack. When she was last here, she was talking about oak and pine, and now she has another business venture. So I'll let her go into that. Michelle, welcome back to the show. Hi, thanks for having me. So happy to be here. And when you say that she has another business, I was just like, oh my gosh. (laughs) It does sound like a lot, but I'm happy to be here. Happy to talk more about all the ventures that we have going on under our belt. Wonderful. So let's start with you first. Tell our viewers again a little bit about yourself. Yeah. Yourself. I appreciate that. Yeah. So um, I'm an entrepreneur. I, my big passion is to support women. And I, I find that the businesses that I grow and lean more towards is around community support, human connection, finding ways for people to get in front of each other and build those relationships again. And I think, you know, I've always had this bug in me to get people in the same room Um, But I really found this passion after COVID. I think after a while being isolated and alone, it's easy, you know, it's safe to say that we're looking for that in-person connection and that community aspect of it. Um, And I'm just happy to be able to take the skill sets that I have to be able to, you know, build that type of container for us all. That I think is wonderful. Let's start off with Oak and Pine first and delve into how Gather evolved from that, if I'm saying that correctly. So let's <laughs> tell our viewers briefly about Open Pie and how you got into Gather and what Gather is. Yeah, you know what's interesting is the long-term vision has always been Gather. Like when I decided I wanted to be an entrepreneur, that I wanted to build a community, that I wanted to have this container for us to all share and be in, uh, Gather was the the vision, the concept. But when I first launched my business back in 2018, I didn't know how to get there. And I felt very overwhelmed because I didn't have the resources. I didn't have the connection. I really didn't know what my first step was. So I had to really take a step back and reflect, well, how am I eventually going to get to this space and create it for us? Because as we know, having a brick and mortar is very expensive. There's a lot of overhead. There's a lot of learning that comes with having a physical space. So being able to say, well, my first step doesn't need to be opening the space, but rather if I know that I want to have a community, let's just start there. So that's where Oak and Pine really blooms from is is that concept of getting like-minded people together. And for me, as I mentioned, my passion is to support women. I was in this new chapter in my life of, I want to be considered an entrepreneur. I want to grow into this role. So how can I find other people and other women who are doing the same, who are looking to to design life on their terms through entrepreneurship? So um, that's where Oak and Pine was born. Back in 2018, I hosted my first event. It was a room full of my closest friends and family and past colleagues. They were there to support me. We had 25 people. I was able to like take really great photos and then, uh, you know, sell the next event, which was two months after that. And that room was filled with 25 wonderful, supportive people, but outside of my network. And I started to realize like, okay, this is actually happening. This is growing. And then after that, we did 50 for a bigger conference and it just kept growing and growing. And, um, it wasn't until COVID hit where I had to really pivot because we, I had to cancel all my events. Um, it wasn't an option to be able to have in-person events. I didn't know anything or much about online events at that time either. Um, so I had to pivot to be a hybrid community until we can open the doors. So that's when I opened and launched the Oak and Pine Society membership. Um, and then we just grew during the pandemic from seven to a hundred members. And that was true validation that we are looking for a community, especially when you're a new entrepreneur. Um, and then that was, that was kind of our trajectory. That's how we grew. That's how I personally find myself as a member of this community, because if it weren't for the society, I know I wouldn't have had the confidence or the resources or the network to be able to achieve my end goal, which was gather and opening up this physical space for us all. I love hearing about that. And I believe I went to one of your first events a while back. It was at a 
it was at a beautiful hotel in Waikiki, and, and I thought it was very well organized. And you were helping people out with, um, you had a couple of guests too, notable women from the community, and you were helping your guests out with goal setting. And I thought at that time that was pretty amazing since I hadn't ran into a network like that where it was focused on women. So let's go into that. Why is it important for you? to support women, women entrepreneurs, women business owners, women professionals. Why is that so important for you? It takes some soul searching for me uh, because when you're in, when you decide that you want to be an entrepreneur, it can be overwhelming, right? Like all possibilities are available to you. Everything is at your fingertips and it's up to you to decide what you want to niche down to, who you want to support. So. At that time, I started to reflect back on my own lineage of like, well, why do I want to be an entrepreneur? Why is this important to me? And it gave me a chance to reflect back on my own childhood um, and the lineage that I have. So if it weren't for my grandma and my mom being the strong, brave women that they are to be able to uproot the Philippines and move to Hawaii, and I'm happy they picked Oahu, um, my life would look so different as a first-generation American. And I think about that all the time. I was like, they gave me a head start in life because they chose to take the risk to do something different and to do something for themselves so that I, you know, their future can have a better life. And, and I think about that and I, I hear the stories of the women in my circle now doing the same for their family. And for me, it's like, because I had that in my network and I see, and I get to reap the benefits of it. I want to support other women who are on that trajectory as well, who want that for themselves, who want that for their family. And, you know, the best way I think we can do that is through community. So when you meet these women who come to you as a resource, what are some topics or challenges that they've ran into that you've identified? Are there common ones? Why do they reach out for the network that you provide? Yeah, it's so interesting because you do see common stories, but everyone's situation is so different. So um, the common thing I hear is like, I don't know where to start. I'm looking for community. Um, I, I want to be able to do this thing and I I want to be able to have the resources. So when it comes to the struggles, I would say for women in particular, it's like I feel like I have no time because I'm taking care of my kids. I'm worrying about packing their lunch the night before, dropping them off. Now I have a sick kid and I have to, you know, go pick them up. Or my mom, I have to take her to um, her eye doctor appointment. So caregiving, caretaking, being a mom really does take a lot of time. Um, But yet they still have this desire to be able to provide for their family financially. They have this passion that they want to launch a business. And they feel that, you know, and being able to uh, find a way to do both is really hard. And because everyone's situation is so different, being able to create a container where they can say like, here's my struggles right now. I don't know where to start. What have you done? And that story talk, that conversation can be very uh, encouraging and empowering. But then also the free flowing dialogue allows them to really find and pick and choose what what feedback and topics are relevant to them um, at that point in time, right? So yeah, so I would say the common thread is time. Like how do you even have the time to build a career? How do you even have time to build a business while you have all of these other responsibilities at home? And speaking of time and doing all these things i want to commend you and i want to let our viewers know that you are actually running an event right now while being interviewed and i'm so grateful it's a testament to you doing it all and making time for you know commitments and things and i absolutely love you for that so thank you michelle let's delve into that so event you are right now at gather yes what is So Gather is an event venue. Um, It's a space where you can host your panel discussions, your workshops, if it's a wellness workshop, if it's an educational workshop, 
Um, it's also a great space for companies to do their leadership offsite, sales trainings, um, company meetings. Uh, and it, what's funny is I keep finding myself back in the event space. And when I launched my business back in 2018, I didn't identify myself as an event planner until two years later. And I said, oh, I put together these conferences. I put together these meetups for our members. Um, I think I'm an event planner. And I had like this whole like, oh my gosh, this epiphany of like, I just realized what I am and who I am as an entrepreneur, what industry I'm in. And I, and I like called a meeting with our members to like share this big thing. And I was like, I know who I am as a career person. I'm an event planner. And they're just like, yeah. Yes, we knew that, Michelle. And it was, it was just such a funny, um, it was just such a funny moment for me of, of recognizing and having like that aha moment that clicked for me. Um, but it was so obvious to everyone else. And I think when we think about the entrepreneur journey, or even when you're in your career, that, that moment of aha is like priceless. So all that to say, I thought I was going to be opening a co-working space. It, after having six months under our belt, um, I'm realizing that it's more of an event venue. And I'm actually very relieved in that because I know that industry, I know events, uh, and it's less co-working, although we do have, uh, you know, days where people come here to work remotely. So it's, it's pretty interesting how the business is taking shape of its own. Yeah. And, and I would love for you to go more into that. As an entrepreneur, how important is it to have the flexibility and the open-mindedness for change? Oh, it was hard for me, to be honest, to let go of what I thought this business was going to be um, because I had this set vision, right? And when you put co-work inside of the name, it really limits you of what you are and what you do. <laughs> so uh, it was a moment of like, okay, well, let's just figure it out and be flexible. And as soon as I kind of let go of the expectation, that's when opportunities started to come up. That's when I can speak about the business a lot more clearly. Um, that's when I could get like direct feedback from the people who are using the product the way we have uh, that it's growing into. So. I think as an entrepreneur and even as a career person, really, it's neutrality that helps you grow because once you let go of expectations, you start to see all of the different types of opportunities that are available to us in this moment. And that will lead you down a path that is exciting and fun and uh, just kind of going with it, you know? Yeah. And, and, and that's wonderful that you talk about that. So tell us a little bit about what's going on right now at Gather. Yeah, so I, you know, what's funny is whenever I see panel discussions like this and gatherings, I seriously am like on the verge of crying. And, and the reason because that is, is like I mentioned, I'm passionate about supporting women and to be able to see other communities out there who are doing the same in their own way um, and empowering women who are gravitating towards them. It's just, it's just the icing on top. So today, Bumwahine, they host an amazing panel discussion for female entrepreneurs. Um, it was about how to get ready for the holiday season. And I'm just so, so, so grateful that Nikki, the founder, had chose our venue to be able to host this wonderful workshop. That is great. And congratulations on that, by the way, for, you know, people knowing more about uh, your intention and the space that you provide. You know, how you talked earlier about realizing who you were as far as your direction when it comes to your entrepreneurial journey goes. What would you like to tell individuals out there as far as how to find or even start finding clarity when it comes to their purpose? Kind of a deep question, but well, no, I love it. I love going into like the deep conversations. It's, it's my vibe. Um, but I would say find people that you feel comfortable with to be able to just speak it out loud, to say, this is what I think I want to do. I don't know exactly what it looks like just yet, but this is why I'm passionate about it. This is why it's been on my mind for so long. And here's the story behind it. And I think, I think as people in general, when we, before we 
say it out loud. We want it to be perfect, right? We don't want to say the wrong thing. We don't want to trap ourselves in a box or anything like that. But I've found that clarity comes the best from just having conversations with people, having just this casual, free-flowing dialogue. And what's interesting about the conversation is you get different perspectives. So they have a whole different life that they're living. They see what you're explaining in a whole different lens. And when you are able to hear what they hear and what they're experiencing from the conversation, it gives you so much, it gives you a different vantage point. Um, so I would say my, my biggest advice is just to talk about it. And it doesn't have to be perfect. And it's okay to say, I don't know. I think, you know, you don't have to always come off as super confident. Just find that, that one safe group, whether it's a community that you tap into, whether it's your um, business bestie or whomever, uh, find someone to be able to just spitball with and, and have those conversations. Thank you for that. Where is Gather, by the way? It is in Hawaii Kai, uh, same building as Roy's Restaurant. Um, and we have this beautiful corner lot that overlooks the ocean. Um, you can see Diamond Head. And if you're looking for a great space to end the day, highly recommend it because the sunset here is just phenomenal. And aside from, well, maybe including that, you, you talked about how the venue is, it seems like a great physical space. What else led you to choose that particular spot for your business? I, I'm from Hawaii Kai. I, I live in the area and I've been here basically my whole life. And I found that we don't have anything like this in the neighborhood. Um, and, and to be able to say like, we're serving the community by providing a comfortable workspace. We're serving the community to give them, you know, uh, another venue option rather than having to go to town. But then also encouraging other people who are don't who don't usually come on the side to be able to see the beauty of Moikai and um, that. And then we have a lot of parking, so <laughs> that was definitely on the top of the list. Is like. How much parking do we need? This definitely needs a lot as an event venue. So uh, that was on the top of the list. I love how you thought about that. Definitely uh, an event planner at heart. And I'm sure people appreciate you for that. I had, oh my God, I had another question for you and it completely flipped my mind. Um, okay, so we already talked about your passion for it and the challenges. Let's talk about your vision for uh, gather what where do you see this company i don't want to go out too far but i'll just say in the near future where do you see gather going yeah so in the near future i see gather well even backing up and kind of relating back to what we were saying earlier of letting go of expectations my expectation when we opened the door was we were going to have co-working event venue and program like those are the three things that I thought we were going to offer under this roof and I'm finding that it's less co-working and more events and more programs so I really see us like leaning into those two two products um programs are things like oak and pine and I'll give you a little teaser I'd love to come back to talk about this but I'm also developing another program called work tribe which is a maternity transition program for female or for women in the workforce. And I know we talked about this off camera. My husband told me to stop building businesses, but I was like, this is the last one I promise. I'm very passionate about it because one of the things that I'm finding is not everybody has the option to be able to grow a business, um, even though they want to. So how can we create a more inclusive and supportive environment in the nine to five? And I be truly believe that there are companies out there who want to do it. They just don't know where to start. So this is a program that I can like really help them in. So anyway, so those are the programs. And then the event venues, uh, it's a place for leadership offsites, uh, panel discussions like today. Uh, it's a place for masterminds and workshops. So it's very, uh, it's a very like elevated place for you to grow as an individual, both personally and professionally. And you already went over this earlier. Let, let's go back to this. Where does one start if they wanted to start a business? Yeah, I, I would say find community uh, because you don't know what you need until you take that first step. And there's always going to be people out there who are offering um, a cookie cutter way to start your business. 
that might have worked for them, but it might not work for you. So um, the way that I have structured Oak and Pine is we have regular meetups for you to expand your network through um, these casual settings. We have like kahanas, we have coffee chats, and that's a way for you to just talk and practice speaking about your business. Um, but then we also offer different resources and workshops so that you get a little taste of this is event marketing or this is how to um, like have a productive day. Here's a framework. So it gives you a little taste of what could be your next step, but a place to experiment and explore. So going back to your question, where do you start? I think it's finding a resource that you can tap into, a community and network that you can tap into to be able to discover your first step. I've, you know, I've heard you talk before. And again, I mentioned back in the day when I went to one of your events, and I think you are a very passionate individual, which is why I'm so honored to know you. With that being said, I would love for you to tell our viewers out there or advise or, you know, share. How would you, how would one tackle fear of starting, especially when it comes to new endeavors or new business? Um, what's funny is fear doesn't go away. It, it's always there and it's always at the same level, it seems but you learn how to kind of work through it. You know, you speak with these great, um, when you have conversations with people who are on stage pretty often, you ask them like, how did you get over the fear of public speaking? They say, I don't, I just learn how to process it better. So it's the same thing with entrepreneurship. It's like right before you get on stage, the butterfly feeling of, should I run away? Should I make an excuse that, you know, I don't feel well? Like, what, what do I need to do to get out of the situation? I think, Whenever you feel that emotion, find the tools that allow you to break through it. So as an entrepreneur, what's your ritual? You know, if you're feeling overwhelmed with the day to day, what can you do every single day so that you can get out of the emotional state and really into the action? Like what, what do I need to do? What is my next step? So, so yeah, I would say to process fear, explore different options right? It could be journaling. It could be maybe you have a wellness practice that like you go to sound healing once a week or you do something that grounds you. I like to walk my dog in the morning and leave my phone in the car and not like just stay completely disconnected. And I watch my dog, you know, walk around and have fun, so on and so forth. So for me, that's kind of how I ground myself. Um, and I, I would encourage everyone else to do the same. Just find something that you can do as a ritual to get you in that mindset regularly. I love that. And I, I, I do something similar where I have to get out and get some sunlight every morning. So that's where I do my workout. And similar to you, I, I mean, I have my phone, but I don't look at it when I'm doing my workout. Is there anything else that we haven't talked about that you would like to add in the few minutes that we have? Left? Yeah. Um, well, I would just love to kind of plug the things that we have going on under our roof. So I kind of touched on it, but with our umbrella, we have two things, programs and events. So if you're looking for a community of local female entrepreneurs and you're looking to see a network in a very comfortable environment, I do invite you to check out our membership. We have regular events that you can tap into before even committing, see if we're the right fit, if there we're the right community. And for, if we're not, there's so many other great communities locally that you can tap into. Um, so that's one. And then the other program that I'm slowly starting to develop is to, the mission there is to make the workforce more inclusive for women who are having kids. So this Work Tribe is a maternity transition program for local businesses. And our goal here is to support women in these middle manager roles so that they can um, climb the career ladder into leadership roles and executive roles. So I'll be talking more about that once, once it starts to cap, get some traction. Um, and then the second thing that I, uh, I would love to chat about is, you know, our event venue. Um, as an event planner, my whole goal is to make events easy for you. So whether it's that you're looking for a space uh, for a company offsite um, and it's overwhelming for your HR team, you can just partner with us. We'll take care of everything from like 
finding the food, doing the layouts. You just tell us what tech you need. We'll get it all set up. So that way your your team can focus on their core duties, which is making sure your employees are happy and we'll provide you the space. We'll provide you with the support. And that's what we're looking to do at Gather. Wonderful. And Michelle, how do people get in contact with you and Gavin? Yeah, um, you can contact me via email, which is join, J-O-I-N, at gathercoworking.com. Um, I'm most present on Instagram and LinkedIn as well, so you'll be able to find me there. Thank you. And again, I am so appreciative of you making the time to come on the show today. So thank you. Thank you, Michelle. We had today Michelle Carmack join us on our show, founder of Oak and Pine, as well as Gather. And hopefully you can be back on to talk about that third program in the next year or so. I will be keeping an eye out for that. So thank you again, Michelle. Thanks for having me. Of course. And thank you to the folks at Think Tech Hawaii for making shows like this possible. Jay Fidel, Haley, and Mike, thank you for everything that you do for these shows. Until next time, aloha.